looking at the Africa map. You can see a lot of greenery and lush flora to the south. However, things change when you travel north. The world's largest desert. Spanning several nations and has miles and miles of dune creation. The Sahara Desert. Spans 9 million square kilometers. Equivalent to 18 times the size of Spain. But did you know that thousands of years ago, this spacious area of infertile sand, that makes up a third of Africa was covered with rich vegetation? Why did the Sahara disappear? And what is currently occurring to it? You are watching the terrifying discoveries scientists made under the Sahara Desert. Please take a moment to like and subscribe to Africa Info Hub. Without much delay, let's dive into the video. The Atlantic Ocean borders the Sahara on the west, the Red Sea on the east, the Mediterranean on the north, and the Sahel Savanna on the south. Eleven nations are included in the vast desert. Algeria, Chad, Egypt, Libya, Mali, Mauritania, Morocco, Niger, Western Sahara, Sudan, and Tunisia. The sand dune landscapes that are frequently depicted in movies are what make the Sahara Desert renowned. The sand dunes can rise as high as 183 meters, or nearly 600 feet. They only cover around 15% of the entire desert, though. Mountain ranges. Plateaus, plains covered in sand and gravel, salt flats, basins, and depressions are other topographical features in the Sahara Desert. How did the Sahara change from a tropical region to the harsh, arid place it is today? This question's answer takes us back in time by thousands of years. The Sahara has experienced periodic dryness and humidity for a very long time. The tilt of the Earth's orbital axis, which alters the angle at which solar radiation enters the atmosphere, causes these variations. There have been periods of increased solar energy input throughout Earth's history that coincide with the West African monsoon season. North Africa receives much more rain during these periods, called African humid periods. More rain brings more flora, rivers, and lakes to the area. But something unexpected occurred between 8,000 and 4,500 years ago. The change from humid to dry happened much more quickly, in some places than could be explained, by the orbital precession alone, giving rise to the modern Sahara Desert. David Wright, an archaeologist, explains what followed in his study. He spotted what appeared to be a pattern. When he poured the archaeological and environmental data, primarily derived from sediment cores and pollen records, all dated to the same era. Wherever people with their domesticated animals were found in the archaeological record, the types of flora also underwent a similar change. It appeared as though people their goats and cattle traversed the grasslands every time. They left a trail of shrubs and desert in their wake. Wright concluded that overgrazing the grasses was reducing the amount of atmospheric moisture. Plants give out moisture, which causes clouds and increases reflective power. According to David Wright, this may have precipitated the end of the humid period. More suddenly than the orbital shifts can account for it. The speed at which the desert spread would have been accelerated by the possibility that these nomadic people also utilized fire as a tool for land management. Do you picture whales playing on the sloping sand dunes in the Sahara Desert? Even though whales cannot survive outside of water, there is evidence that the forerunners of the modern whale once swam around in the scorching African desert. In 1902, geologists led their camels into a region in the western desert of Egypt. Because of the intense summer heat, a nearby hill was known as the Mountain of Hell. But in this dry valley were whale bones, with vertebrae, the thickness of campfire logs, and some of the skeletons were 50 feet long. Sandstone boulders had been molded into odd patterns by centuries of fierce wind, and at night the moonlight was so bright that it made the sand glitter like gold. They were 37 million years old from when this region and much of northern Egypt were submerged in a shallow, tropical sea. And although the geologists were unaware of it at the time, 
the ancient specimens in the sand, would eventually answer one of evolution's most nagging questions. How whales evolved into whales? The existence of feet on these long dead whales was one hint discovered. Long held theories among scientists suggested that whales were formerly land mammals that progressively lost their four legs as they made their way into the ocean over millions of years. Modern whales still have vestiges of their hind leg bones as evidence. However, until paleontologists started unearthing hundreds of whale fossils, buried in Wadi Hayton and discovered legs and knees, little in the fossil record illustrated the transformation. Footed whales from earlier times have since been found. But the Wadi Hayton specimens are the most numerous and well-preserved. A three-hour journey from Cairo. The valley is now a UNESCO World Heritage Site. That receives roughly 14,000 visitors annually. Paleontologists believe that. The landlubber progenitors of whales. Were scavengers like pigs or deer that lived close to the sea. They began spending more time in the water around 55 million years ago. First consuming dead fish at the shore. Then pursuing prey in the shallows. And finally wading deeper. Some of them developed characteristics that made hunting in water easier as they went along. As a result of no longer having to support their entire body weight at sea, they gradually grew larger, their rib cages and backbones lengthening. Two types of fossils make up the majority of those in the valley. The enormous creature with an almost eel like body was called Basilosaurus. When the mouth of the smaller, more heavily muscled Darudin opened. It revealed a jaw lined with serrated daggers rather than peg-like teeth, giving it more of a modern whale appearance. It's interesting to note that, in the center of Chile's Atacama Desert, fossils of over 75 whales have been discovered. The question of how they got there has generated discussion among scientists. The Sahara Desert is still full of mysteries, and the latest one involves an item discovered there, whose uses are still unknown. It is the Clayton Ring. And even more puzzlingly, these rings were discovered in Egypt's remotest region of the Sahara Desert. Clay cylinders conical in shape, and open at both ends are known as Clayton Rings. Named after the geographer and desert explorer, P.A. Clayton, 1896-1962. They are always found with one, or more perforated clay discs that do not fit as lids, but are always only marginally larger than the smaller aperture of the ring. Some were created specifically for a customer as a set, while others were repurposed from vintage ceramic jars and sherds. The Egyptians who lived beside the Nile did not utilize these items. Instead, they were a vital component of the Sheikh Mufta culture, a nomadic herding group who lived in the Dakla oasis. During Egypt's early dynasties, Clayton rings and discs have been discovered in the oasis, close to the herdsmen and hunters' seasonal camps. Still, astonishingly, they have also been discovered in caches up to 300 kilometers away from stable water supplies. Why would individuals go through the trouble of transporting Clayton rings so far into the desert because these items were so important? This is a question that is yet to be answered. What do you think of our video? Let us know in the comment section below. If you enjoyed this video, tell your friends about it and hit the like button. Also, share with friends on Facebook, WhatsApp, and Twitter.